Hey guys, Joel back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ lessons and today we are talking about binomial expansion. So this is back to the algebra um, uh, part of the book for the, the last stint of, of, our, uh, of our journey. Um, we'll be doing this and then um, binomial distribution and then we're going to finish off with a bit of an odds and ends lesson with a, a few little bonuses to uh, previous lessons which will help you out in the OCR FSMQ exam. So, learning objective today is to be able to expand a bracket with a large power uh, using binomial expansion methods. And before I forget, I'm going to apologise for not having uh, an episode out the last few days, but I have been feeling under the weather, and today is the first day I've been feeling pretty good. So, uh, I've still got a bit of a cough, so if you hear us uh, <coughs> coughing, uh, then. Uh, you know, that's the reason why, but let's get into things. So, welcome to the wonderful world of binomials. Uh, the binomial just simply means uh, a two term, and this could be an expression such as A plus B, or B plus C, or C plus D, you get the idea. But let's start, uh, let's see what happens when we start expanding 1 plus X to ascendant power. So, we'll start off with 1 plus X cubed. So, that's easy, you know, that's just 1 plus X stuck to uh, 1 plus x squared, and a quick way to do this in an exam is square the first, square the second, and uh, put them together and double, so like that. So uh, squared the 1 got 1, squared the x and got x squared, 1 times x is x, uh, so double that is 2x. So that's a quick way to do that, and then I'd expand that, and I'd end up with 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus uh, x cubed. Um, expand 1 plus x to the 4. That's still fairly easy. It's just 1 plus x squared, squared. So we are square the first, square the second, twice the inner product, and then do it again. So you end up with that, and then you get that, which is 1 plus 4x plus 6x squared plus 4x cubed plus x to the 4. And then 1 plus x to the 5, get lost. <laughs> I'm not doing this again, it's all getting a bit boring now. There must be an easier way to do this. But let's have a look at these uh, the answers at the top here. So we've got that, um, which is a, a horrible little uh, you know circle that I've just drawn around it. But there we go. If we if we go back a step and you know we'll put in all of the you know uh, bits and bobs. You know one plus x to the one is obviously just one plus x. One plus x squared. We know what that is. But if we make that little shape there, it looks a little bit like a triangle, doesn't it? But you can see a little bit of a pattern between them. Uh, down the left, it's all 1s. Down the right, it's all 1s. The coefficients we're talking about here. Uh, down the middle, uh, or the left middle, it's 2, 3, 4, 5. Down the right middle, it's 2, 3, 4, 5. And then go down again, you end up with 3, 6, 10. It's, you know, it, it works out like that. But there's 1 plus x to 0, which is 1 as well. So it's a very predictable format. 1 plus ax plus bx squared plus cx cubed plus dx to the 4. Stuff like that. But if we work down, we're, we end up getting a bit of a triangle like this. So working in, and it's very symmetric, uh, you'll notice. You know, like here, uh, 3, 3, 1, 1. That's called Pascal's triangle. Uh, Pascal, I don't know whether it's the same Pascal that actually came up with uh, with pressure because pressure is measured in pascals. Whether it's the same guy or not, I don't actually know. Uh, but it tells you the coefficients of the powers of x in the expansion of 1 plus x to the n. So if you wanted to expand that uh, 1 plus x to the 12th, for example, you'd go down to the 12th row, and then you'd know all your coefficients. But for example, if we wanted to pick uh, 1 plus x squared we uh, to the 2, we'd pick the second column down, which is this one. So it would square the first, you get 1 plus um uh, twice the inner product, uh, you get the 2, and obviously if you square the x you get 1, so that's right. So there you go, the quadratic line is that, the cubic line is that, the quartic line is that, the quintic line is that. You get the idea. There's another way of getting these numbers though, uh, which is ncr equals n factorial over r uh, factorial n minus r factorial. Um, you, you are actually given that in the exam, but an easy way to just remember it is that, um, yeah, so feel free to memorize the, the Pascal's triangle or learn how to get it. 
but I use the calculator, the NCR button, uh, which is shift and then divide on a good Casio. I wish I had an image of that so I could actually show you, but if you have, a, have your Casio calculator out now, um, if you press shift and then divide the NCR button, so you want to type in your N first, so it could be 4C3, so it would be 4, shift, then divide, and then 3, for 4C3. But here we go, let's try this. Um, if you wanted 3C3, you'd do 3 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 factorial. Because, obviously, R is 1, um, and N minus R, 3 minus 1 is 2, so you get that. And that's what that is. So that's, a uh, factorial, by the way, just means the number times every number before it. So 3 times 2 times 1, 1 times 2 times 1, and that equals 3. So that would be there, I think. Yep, yeah, there you go. And that makes sense because you've gone to the cubic line and you've went one in. Makes sense. So there you go. There's a selection of others. You can have a quick look at that yourself if you want to. Um, but that is using that formula there. So that's the power. And that is the position. So uh, if this was 1 plus x to the 3, the power here would be 3, which is there. And the position would be 1, so, you know, uh, on this one, it would go uh, x, 1 plus uh, x plus 3x, uh, 3x plus 3x squared plus um, x cubed, which makes sense for power 3. Right, but anyway, I'll stop confusing you. Let's do an example. Expand 2 minus 3x to the 6. So, you could sit here and expand uh, from scratch and hope that you don't mess up, but you know, in an exam, I don't actually think you'd get any marks for that. The, the examiner would need to see that you've took, you know, a, an appropriate approach, which is binomial expansions. But I can't be bothered to actually do that, so I didn't. So let's use our lovely new friend, which is NCR. So the way I like to do it, a lot of teachers like to go along the page like that, but I like to go in columns. So here we go, uh, 6C0, 6C1. 6C2, and you go all the way up to 6C6, that's when you know when to stop, 6 being the power, and the, the number here being the position, and then you times that by, now, the person on the left, the person on the left hand side, he will feel the top power, so the 6, and then he'll fall, so he starts high, and then dies, like that, and all the way down to 2 to the 0, and then you multiply that by his buddy here, which is minus 3x. So you need you need the sign as well, so it'll be minus 3x. But he starts low and then grows, so he'll start at uh, minus 3x to the 0. Make sure you put brackets around that because the power, uh, uh, you know, times where the power affects everything inside the bracket. So it would be minus 3 to 0, which is 1, and x to 0, which is 1. And he starts low and then grows. So there you go, he goes all the way up to uh, power 6, like that, but I would strongly advise keeping, a, keeping your um, xy bit in brackets with the sign. And that equals, so 6c0, if you type that into your calculator, that'll spit out 1, and this bit will be 1, and 2 to the 6 is 64, I believe, so you end up with 1, apparently. 6, hold on a second... Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so what I've done there is uh, just typed out the C number. So it's 1 times 6, uh, 1, 6, uh, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. I didn't think there was a mistake on this PowerPoint. And then there's all the times as again. 2 to the 6 is 64. I was right. Uh, 32 for 2 to the 5, 16 for 2 to the 4, and you get the idea there. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, by the way. So that's how I knew uh, that. And here you'd have 1, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. Then minus 3x. 9x squared. Minus 3 squared is 9. x squared is x squared. Minus 27x cubed. 81x to the 4. Three, uh, sorry, minus 243x to the 5. And 729x to the 6. The calculator will do all that for you. You would not be expected to do that in your head, but feel free if you want to do that. 
and that all equals times them all together. So you end up with 64, and then 6 times 32 times minus 3, you end up with minus 576x. 15 times 16 times 9 is 2160, x squared, and you end up with all that. Uh, check left if you want on a calculator, but I, don't, I believe that is right. And then, uh, just to finish off, the examiner always likes it in ascending powers of x, so you'd start with this and end with this in your little answer at the bottom. So you end up with 64 minus 5 times 6x plus uh, 2160x squared minus 4320x cubed plus 4860x to the 4 minus 2916x to the 5 plus 729x to the 6. And that is that. It's very, very boring. I absolutely hate binomial expansions, but this is on core 2 uh, A-level as well, as well as the FSMQ. And there's an extended binomial expansion when you come to core 4. But that is um, not required knowledge for here, so you know I won't bore you with that. But uh, yeah, you need to learn this, unfortunately. It'll, it'll always be a few marks on the exam. Um, <clears throat> and, a, and, a, and quite an easy one to get as long as you, you stick to your columns, make sure your work is very, very clear and uh, you know your calculator is a good one. You, I would highly recommend a Casio calculator for this exam. But yeah, I will see you for binomial distribution in the next episode. If you found this helpful, please leave a like, it does help. And leave any comments if you have any questions or, or criticisms of the videos. And there will be a worksheet in the description as usual. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in a couple of days for the next video. See you later.